Okay, so once again, the principles of aestheticism, beauty has intrinsic value. Art does not have to be a means of enforcing a moral code. This was revolutionary. Wilde's ideas that you could have art or literature or poetry or theater, whatever it is, simply for the beauty of it, and that it didn't have to necessarily enforce morality was uh, was a revolutionary concept and quite a controversial concept during his his time period. Leading up to the Victorian period, um, you know, really with the exception of the Renaissance, uh, most of the time art was expected in some ways to align with more with morality with some kind of uh, social moral code but wild reveled in the idea of beauty for its own sake okay so aestheticism and decadence a reaction to conservative and restrictive moral and social codes decadence was all about championing championing um, uh, pleasure and beauty, rejecting moral codes and um, and kind of just reveling in, in the superficial nature of art. Um, Estes considered art to be escapist, that it should be valued only for its ability to bring pleasure. In the picture of Dorian Gray, the character Lord Henry is an aesthete and he is certainly a decadent. Um, he instructs Dorian, who is an innocent at the beginning, on, um, on the pleasures of aestheticism and on decadence. Now, decadence taken to an extreme is uh, hedonistic. So hedonism is a philosophy proposing that the most important quest in life is pleasure now, to be hedonistic, though, has a negative connotation. That is the danger of leading one into sin and depravity as a result of this search for pleasure. Okay, a Faustian tale, we've mentioned this, I think, before, but this is uh, the classic tale of um, a deal with the devil. So any Faustian tale is a situation in which a person who is ambitious Surrenders, surrenders moral integrity in order to achieve power and success for a limited term. And this always comes at a terrible price. In the original Dr. Faustus, Dr. Faustus um, makes a deal with the devil, sacrificing his soul so that uh, he can be rich and powerful. And um, at the end, when Dr. Faustus realizes too late that the deal is not worth it, um, you know, ultimately he has to pay the price and is dragged to hell. All right, the concept of leading a double life is very important in Wilde's fiction, um, but especially important in, in this story. Victorian society was repressive and it did not allow for human beings to express ideas, desires, and personal tendencies openly. So Wilde in his own life, in reality, but also in his fiction, really dealt with the concept of alter egos or leading a double life. Um, Dorian Gray on the outside looks beautiful. He's a handsome, dashing young man, but on the inside, he's getting slowly more and more immoral as, as the plot continues. So his ugliness on the inside is in opposition to his beauty on the outside. This is a coded way to discuss homosexuality in fiction. The fact that Oscar Wilde had to hide his personal innate nature, um, it stands in the opposite, uh, the opposition of the way society viewed him. So this is not the only novel where this concept comes up for Oscar Wilde. We will also take a look at the importance of being earnest, which is a play um, that deals with duality in existence as well. Okay, some more literary terms, a dandy. This is a Victorian man who places particular importance upon physical appearance, refined language, leisurely hobbies, and pursues with the appearance of nonchalance. Hedonism 
is the pursuit of pleasure, sensual self-indulgence. And as I said before, hedonism can um, devolve into depravity. Aphorism. This is a pithy observation that contains a general truth. Oscar Wilde is famous for his aphorisms. And in fact, the beginning of this novel is a, a list of these pithy observations. Okay, melodrama. This is a sensational dramatic piece with exaggerated characters and exciting events intended to appeal to the emotions. Okay, and the picture of Dorian Gray fits this category. A comedy of mar manners is a comedy that satirizes behavior of a particular social group, especially the upper class. So like I said before, the picture of Dorian Gray is a combination of all these popular literary genres from the time period. Okay. All right, so that's it for background information and terms. And now we will get started with chapter one.